Well, our, this next pit is at Chester's Field Community Garden. It's at Chester Street on the Midtown Ridgeway. And we picked it because it's a great example of people coming together to grow a little bit of food in their community. And there's a few other gardens like this on the Ridgeway. I think it, uh, it ties in nicely with the city's policy to create the greenest city, number one, because it uh, emphasizes getting people out of their cars, getting them walking, biking, and what they've also done is to purchase some uh, land along the route here uh, on which uh, it's been possible to create community gardens. And um, community gardens gets people out, exercising out in the uh, environment, and also helps to create community as well because people get to know each other around the community garden. So this is a thriving community garden in a space that was originally uh, an underused lot and we're also right on top of the city here. Yeah, we're at uh, one of the higher elevations in the city of Vancouver and um, it is an area of 65 meters or more above sea level where we would expect to find certain types of uh, geological materials and certain types of soils. And uh, I'm really looking forward to uh, what, what we have here. Mm -hmm. I think we've dug a really interesting pit for you that hopefully illustrates some of the things you're expecting to find. Hey Art, what's that you found in there? It's a very, very compacted layer. It's about a meter or 20 centimeters deep in the soil and it's so hard that it's, it's almost impossible to dig through. Uh, and I don't see any roots that penetrate that either. So how come that layer is so compacted? Well, uh, if you uh, imagine us, we're here in the, almost the center of Vancouver. And uh, if you can imagine us at this site, 10,000 years ago, we would have had a kilometer and a half of ice over the top of our head. Tremendous weight pushing down on that material, compacting it. Then the, uh, the glacier melted a couple thousand years after that, uh, melt waters carried the silts and clays out into the Strait of Georgia and dumped on top of it these materials that we see on top of the gray layer. So that hard layer down there is gray, but the middle of the pit is bright red. How come it's so colorful? It's something that home gardeners, community gardeners can look for in understanding the drainage on the site because these bright colors indicate that it has been well drained. And uh, unlike some of our other soil management groups, uh, we don't have to worry about uh, ponded water here for most of the year. And on top of that bright red layer, you've got some really nice dark brown soil. What's the story there? We have an interesting uh, combination of the native soil that was here uh, which would have formed under a coniferous forest in a well-drained site. And at that time, we would have had a litter layer at the surface that was acidic. We have a climate here that's uh, very wet through many months of the year. And that acidic uh, leachate washed uh, the basic elements out of the surface and also the um, iron and aluminum out of the surface. The iron re-precipitated in this rusty red color, iron oxides. And we also have the remnant of um, an, uh, an, a horizon that was leached of its iron, but has not been stained by this dark color at the surface. And so this is an interesting thing, because this, this reflects the change in this soil subsequent to human habitation, to clearing the forest, planting grass, and it could have been a pasture, it could be a lawn like this, and we see this organic staining on the surface, roughly 30, 35 centimeters. That is a new feature that is, it's human created. It's not a natural feature, superimposed on the, the native soil profile. So what are some of the key management considerations for the community gardeners at this site? There, there are two main problems with this soil. And one of them we can see here is the presence of stones. 
And on a small site like this, it's relatively easy to screen these out. Uh, it's more of a problem on a farm where you've got uh, hectares and hectares of this. Rock picking is possible, but it's a much more expensive uh, process. So one thing that you would like to do is to get rid of many of these stones. The second problem is that the soil texture and, and the, the gardener can recognize this by grittiness is very, very sandy, very coarse textured, which means that it doesn't hold water very readily, very small amount of available water in the heat of summer, maybe three days before you need to irrigate again. So uh, irrigation is going to be a key to managing these soils during our summer dry period. During the winter time though, and we're now out here in the middle of October, these are beautiful soils for extending the growing season. You can be uh, uh, cultivating, you can be planting, you can be harvesting on this soil and not do damage to it because it doesn't have the uh, soil structure that soils that are higher in silts and clays would have. It's a sandy, single grain structure, very forgiving in terms of uh, soil compaction. It can still compact, but it's not uh, as bad as some of the other soil management groups that we've talked about. How productive do you think these kinds of soils would be? This soil would be uh, with good management, that is with irrigation and uh, also improving soil fertility, um, which means liming, it, which means uh, soil testing and uh, improving the uh, nutrient availability. Uh, this soil is as productive as any others that, we, that we've seen, perhaps more so for plants that need a deep rooting zone. Uh, tree fruits, for example, and we have a pear tree behind us, there are other fruit trees on this site, uh, raspberries, uh, plants that are perennial, that need well-drained soil year-round, will thrive in this soil as long as they get water in the summertime and the fertility is looked after. So Art, I can see that both the brown layer and the red layer are quite thick. It's a long ways down before you hit that hard layer in the bottom. Mm -hmm. Is that an important feature of the soil? It is, and the site that we're on right now has ample depth of soil to grow just about anything that we want to produce on this site. We have a meter to meter 20 of well-drained soil. But what can happen in the city with landscaping and urban development is that the site gets excavated and soil removed, maybe even down to a meter, half meter. And so at that point, you're left with a very shallow depth of permeable soil and water ponds there much of the year making it virtually impossible to grow most of the plants that we want to use in either food production or in many cases just simply uh, landscaping. We don't have enough depth of soil and so that is an important indicator of the quality of these soils.